welcome back to the channel. So in today's video what we're going to be doing is we are going to be giving this little fella here a full head to tail wash clean scrub up get him looking like 38.6.2% more cute. Yes. Mwah. So what we'll do in this video is we'll go through the different stages and in each stage I'll give you guys some pointers, a few tips. This isn't like a full blown tutorial but I will give you guys some points to notice so if you want to clean your pug then here's some advice to give you guys so let's start off with step one the face folds now the face folds is the most important part of a pug to clean like I can't stress this enough you should be doing this every couple of days now what we do is we just use sensitive baby wipes sensitive skin baby wipes just cotton soft you know what you would use for a baby skin, sensitive skin, because pugs exactly the same, and especially in the nose fold here, very sensitive. And the reason we're doing this step first is, this is the one he hates the most. He does not like getting this done. It is a fight. It is a hard task. So if we get it done now and out the way, then you'll be happy. Another thing you can use is like a cotton swab, cotton bud, whatever you call this thing here. You can use this. These are actually really good because they do get right nicely into his folds. I find personally, so I've found that using a wipe and then using my finger, you know, like that on the end of your finger and then just wiping it inside his face. I know how much pressure I'm applying. I know if it's uncomfortable, I know if it's sore. When you're poking something like that and you can't quite gauge how sore it is for them. With this, I can kind of feel where the dirt is. I can feel around his face. So I much prefer using a finger. So as you can see now, I've got Pablo in like an MMA type hold with my legs. So hopefully he isn't going anywhere. I'll hold the back of his neck here with my hand because he is going to be going backwards and forwards because like I say they do not like this but it has to be done I'm afraid I don't like doing anything he doesn't like to do but this needs done because he will get an infected face and this needs done so let's crack on good boy oh well done oh well done oh good boy so as you can see we're running half his face he's already squiggling wanting to get out but give him lots of positive feedback lots of praise and give him a little treat afterwards so he knows he's been good So then you just want to go around with a towel and just dry all that up because there will be a little bit of moisture in there and that's one thing you don't want in the folds is any type of moisture, any type of wet because that's when you get infections. So you can see here on these, look how much dirt has came out of his face. And like I say, we do this very regularly. So, I mean, this is only after a couple of days but the amount he sniffs in the garden because obviously the flat nose, they get really close stuff, a lot of things get in. So if you leave this for a long time, that's after a couple of days. Imagine what that's like if you don't do it for a couple of weeks. I would highly, 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 I've not even advise it. I, you have to do this. Step two, their ears. Now, just kind of like the nose, you want to be doing this a lot more regularly than every couple of months or however often you bath them. I'm just giving them a check now. They are very, very clean. There is one or two little bits of wax just a bit further down into his ears. So again, what you would use for your own ears. These, I would just dip them in a little bit of water. Get right down, just scoop all the dirt out that you can see all the wax. You know, you don't need to give them a full clean. Just take the wax out, take all the dirt out that you can see. And then you're good to go. And the ears are as simple as that, aren't they, fella? So you just want to find where the wax is, just give it a little scoop out till it's gone, and then just give it a dry with the other end. Just like his face folds, you don't want them to be wet. I would probably clean these at the same time as his face folds, and just do them in a one -er. And there you go, a little bit, just waxing his ears, just a little bit, but at least now clean. You'll all find your own methods of how to hold them, how to stand. A good idea for cleaning the face and the ears, unlike we're doing now, is do it when they're asleep, do it when they're tired, because when they're asleep, they're unaware, they'll just be lying down, the ears will fold out. Have a look in them then, don't touch them, and then just kind of give them a quick little whew, and they'll wake up, but before they know it, they're already cleaned. So we do his face and his ears normally on a night when he's really tired, but obviously for the video purposes, we're doing it now, which is why he's a lot more active and lively. But you'll find your own ways. Having a second person is such a big help as well, so they can hold him while you just... Step three, toenails. Now this is a step that some might have, some might not have. We personally don't do anything with his toenails because we have a lot of pavement and a lot of gravel walks. So his claws get very worn down so we never need to cut them. But at this point, you could either just file them. So we just do it like human nails. We just get a little file and just file the edge of them. Any kind of sharp edges or anything, we'll just file them off. Again, this is a good two person job or a job when they're asleep, when they're just lying down on your flat, 
You can just roll them onto the back and just give them a little smooth over, you know, just so they don't catch them on anything. Step four, brushing. Now this is something you probably should be doing already twice a week or something like that because pug shedding, if you don't already know, is horrendous. If you haven't got a pug and you're getting a pug and you use this as advice, their shedding is horrendous. Everyone who's got a pug will absolutely vouch for that. So the more regularly you brush them, the less hair they have potentially to fall out. So therefore the less they shed, but obviously the more brushing you do, you are taking that hair out anyway. So they still shed the same amount, but just less on your carpets and more in a controlled environment like this. So I would highly recommend a Ferminator or something of similar, a proper de-shedding tool, some sort of, it's not a blade, but sort of a similar sort of thing to a blade. This thing is absolutely perfect. Ferminators, go check them out. They're on Amazon, so just go have a look on there. And then I would just get like a standard normal hairbrush as well for doing like an aftercoat. Start from the head, work the way down the back because obviously you're pulling it down onto the floor. Go nice and smooth, guys. You know, this isn't a race. Take your time. Make it enjoyable for them, Pablo loves it. It's like a nice, soft, smooth scratch. So just keep it like that, nice and lethargic. Nice long strokes all the way down his back. They absolutely love it. Always go with the hair, which basically is from head to tail. And try not to let them eat it. Pablo loves trying to eat the hair. So I would maybe even recommend doing this outside if you've got the possibility to, depending on your weather situation. So then it'll save you a hoovering up job. So let's just get into this. You can honestly brush them for hours and it seems like the hair just keeps coming out. But I normally stop when like you do a couple of brushes and you're only getting like a few scraggly hairs, you're not getting like clumps anymore. That's when I would say stop with that brush and then just go on to your normal brush and just give them a quick, a quick little brush and just get all them dead hairs that are kind of sat in the fur but haven't been taken out. Just kind of get them out, get them off the dog and then you're ready for your bath. There you go. Like I say, doing it inside is not the best, and doing it in your kitchen probably also isn't the best, but this is the only place in our house without carpet, so this is by far the best place in the house to do it for us. So you can see the amount of hair there that has came off him, and obviously all over the floor here. And we do brush you very often, so that's quite a lot for only a couple of days growth, mister. So once he's had his brush, we let him out in the garden. He'll normally go running around with Winston or we'll go out there run around with him and just to get, try and get them extra hairs, just as many out as possible because you don't want them in your drain because they do clog it. He's having a way, what a good boy. And as well, while they're in the garden having a good run around, it gives you plenty of time to clean up after yourself because, well, you need to clean that up. I think it's a little full. Step five, the bath. So we'll start off with the water. You want it roughly about knee height and you want it warm. You don't want it hot because if a pug gets too hot, it starts to breathe and pant heavy. Panting's really obviously bad for pugs. So you want it just warm. You don't want it too cold so they're shivering. Just warm enough so they're not shivering basically. So a little tip and something I learned that somebody told us about bathing a baby is always mix and stir the water with one hand and leave the other hand dry because this hand gets used to the heat of the water so then use this hand to test it because see that's a lot hotter than it is with this hand to put a bit more cold in. So two quite contradicting points here before we get into this. One, try and avoid getting the face wet. Because as I said earlier, if they get wet in the fold and stuff, it needs to be completely dry. So if you can just avoid it as much as possible, then you don't have to bother with trying to dry it and make sure it's dry if you just don't get any water in it. On the other hand, we are going to be washing Pablo's face with water because clean out with baby wipes is good and it gets all the dirt out and it gets all the hair out and it gets it nice and clean. It still smells. So we'll use a little bit of shampoo, get it in his folds, get it nice and properly clean, get it smelling nice again and then we'll give it a proper dry. There you go. <sighs> so you want to start off with just putting them in the water, giving them some scratches, giving them, don't start pouring water on them straight away because that'll just scare them, just let them get used to the water, let them kind of accept what's going to happen because he knows he's going to get wet and he doesn't particularly like it. 
Also make sure you have your towels ready before you put them in the bath because if you'd run and try and get them while they're still in the bath, they're getting out the bath, your house is wet. You'll learn very quickly from that mistake, as we did. So we're going to be using this shampoo and conditioner. Now we don't, I mean, we would recommend it. It smells nice, it's good. You've had no issues with it irritating the skin or anything, but we generally haven't looked into kind of dog shampoos and which is the best. So have a look yourself, see what you guys think's best because or have a look in the comments. I'm sure someone will recommend some good shampoo. But it'll do for now, won't it, fella? You like smelling the mangoes. So I will be wetting his face. Now, you don't want to directly pour water onto his face. Try and pour it onto the back of his head and let it like run down. Don't pour it straight on because they don't like it and it's not very nice for them, so. Hey, okay, mister. Good boy. Oh, good boy. So lots of reinforcement, lots of contact with your hand. You know, make sure they know you're not just throwing water on them, like you're here for them. You're Protecting them and looking out for them. So now we're going to wash this fold, and similar to how we did before, we're kind of just going to go in with a finger, well, a flannel, and in around this fold. Now, I personally sometimes just go in with my finger because I can feel the inside of his face. I know what I'm like, kind of getting into, and I can get like every crevice and. Keep washing your finger and going back in. I've been told off a few times for doing that, but I find it the most efficient method and it's not painful for him because I don't have long nails. There's no, there's nothing in between that's getting in the way of me feeling the contact between us. But we'll use a flannel so I can kind of show you guys how to do it properly. Excuse me. Let's have a look. Mm, that smells a lot better, mister. Good boy. So when we get into step six, the drying stage, that's going to be the first thing you want to dry. You don't want any water stored in there at all, first thing. Right, let's get you shampooed, conditioned, and then out. So it's pretty straight on from here on out. Just shampoo them like you would. Now, I avoid his ears. I get the kind of the top of his head and go around his ears. Try not to get any shampoo in his ears. It might just irritate them. So let's crack on and catch up in step six. So quickly before we get into the drying step, I like to drain the bath before letting him out. So then he doesn't have loads of like excess water in his legs and stuff. We can kind of squidgy him all out, let all the water dry off naturally and then take him out. Step six, drying. I'm a trusty towel bit here. Are you ready, mister? Oh, straight out. Why shaking? Gotta do your face, gotta dry your face. Your face is the most important, let me in them folds. Let me in them folds. Let me in. Let me in. Make drying a game as well. Drying is not very fun. But if you make it into a little game, and you're what's that? What's that? What are you doing? What are you doing? So like I was saying, make it into a game because Pablo is about to go mental. So the areas we need to dry, definitely his nose, definitely his ears and his tail, the little, because obviously the tail folds over, so any kind of crease or crevice where water can sit in, that's what you want to clean. But obviously where his tail folds over onto his back, because obviously his tail's curled, it does that, where you get like a little nuggie in here where basically water likes to sit. So let's go get this, let's go get this little scar. So we let Pablo bite the towel because, uh, come down here, so if you can hear us. So we let Pablo bite the towel because as he's biting the towel, he's drying his face. And obviously that's the most important part we want to dry. Good boy, let me clean them folds. Just, there we go, let me make sure they're dry. Good boy, good boy, well done. Hush little puglet, don't you cry. Everything's gonna be all right. Let's get that little tail nubby. Let's get that little tail. Option B for drying, and our kind of favourite option is a hairdryer. Now, 
do not use it on the hot setting. Most hair dryers should come with something like this, a little button which is a cool fan, which basically just blows air. So it doesn't heat it up, it just blows the air that's in the room. Just normal room temperature air. Do not use heat, because as I've said with the bath water, don't heat them up, don't get them hot. This is just a cheap hair dryer. Like we need to get ourselves a proper one. We need a re we need a quiet one because the sound's not particularly too good. Obviously, you don't want to damage the hearing too much. So we try and do as much drying with the towel as possible, and then just use this to go into the thick areas of his fur, so the back of his neck, in his tail, and just along like the top surfaces of the back. We don't go all over with it. We just kind of do the main areas, get the real thick of the water out, so then he can just naturally air dry for the rest of it. It's not actually that loud. But, obviously you want to try and not get it in his ears as much as possible. As you can see, Padla actually quite enjoys this, so we'll catch back up to you when he's dry. Only two more steps to go. Step seven, the loving. So obviously after such a traumatic experience, you just want to give them a little bit of loving. So what we like to do, give them a treat, wrap them in a blanket, and just give them a cuddle for like half an hour. Plus the blanket and the warmth and these, that is generated from eating the toy and all stuff like that, will dry them off a lot better as well. So we just have a nice little half an hour sit down, little cuddle, and then we'll get on to step eight. Step eight, finishing touches. So we've done everything now. He's now dry, he's had a little sleep. So the last thing we want to do is just give him a little finishing touch. Just like you would if you were cleaning the car or something, you just want to give it that nice little finish polish. We're going to give him some paw butter. Just freshen these paws back up. You can do it when he's asleep now. You don't have to do this at all. This is just something we like to do because his paws are quite dry. <laughs> you okay there? He is tired, he's nice and dry now though. Good boy. So you only need it. You only need a little bit of this if you're using it. I hope you guys found this video fun, informative, or anything like that. If you would like to see me do a full series where I go properly into depth, because I mean, I gave you quite a lot of information there, but. There's still a lot of things I can talk about and mention. So if you'd like to see a full series where we'll go through like each individual one individually. So we'll just talk about brushing or we'll just talk about his face or we'll just talk about ears. And we can do a more in-depth and I can kind of show you inside his ears and how we use the cotton buds and stuff like that. If you'd like to see that, I'll put a vote in one of the top corners here. And just say if you would like to see that and we can do like, you know, one video every other Monday or something where we do like an information video. If that's something you guys are interested in or whether you just want to see vlogs and continue it as we are. Anyways, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, do drop a like, helps out massively. Drop any comments you have down below, ask any questions. I'm sure people will respond in the comments. Let us know any tips you have, because obviously these are my tips. You guys might have some better tips. You might guys have some different tips. Let's all just help each other out. And hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. As always, people, peace out.